Okay, we, talk, we talked about once before also the idea that uh, people, Groys and Gedaila Yisrael, we talked about by Talmud and Kiva, that they didn't have cover Zelazeh, but the cover that Zelazeh comes about is when you emulate a Kosh Baruch Hu, the fact that you care about someone else is mativ. The godless of the Gedaila is so great that we learn from, besides the Hela Gedaila, but the Shemush is something that shows that the Torah brings a person to. So many. Uh, a uh, number of stories just to wake us up to the, the, the care and meticulousness of uh, the Nogu Kovazel was there. talked about the fact there was uh, an almond, Nebuch, the guy lost his wife. He was married for 60 years. So there's two versions of the story, maybe both were true, but they could both be true, one of them. Anyway, so uh, they came to Roshach to say, uh, ask him to daven for him. He said his name. She said, okay, but give me his address too. Okay, they gave him his address. The man apparently lived in Bnei Brak. So he uh, comes to the man's house, knocks on the door, no answer, pushes the door open, hello! Anyway, he walks in, he sees the man sitting on his couch, just staring into space. Nebuch. Shach says, Shalom Aleichem! Shalom Aleichem! Shalom Aleichem! Anyway, so I heard Nebuch, Nebuch, you lost your wife recently. He says, ha, I also, Nebuch, lost my wife, and I also am alone. And... <laughs> you, at least you understand me, I can understand you, you know, but I'm sure I, I, I'm hanging around with Barham all the time, you know, they don't understand me, but now you, if somebody that can understand me, maybe if you wouldn't mind if I would unload my uh, misery a bit, it's hard to share, and you can share with me, so, so it helps, helps comfort me a little bit, and then if you want, you can also say if so, what's bothering you, I can understand you. All of a sudden, the man's eyes started to flicker. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Shach starts talking for a few minutes. Yeah. <sighs> thank you, thank you so much, Efshin. Now, maybe you want to say something, you know. And the man starts to talk. Yeah, he starts to cry. It's, uh, well, he came back every few, <laughs> every week. Claim that. That's one version of the story. The other version was, I sit by myself, Shabbos. I have no company. You, by yourself, I make a good shalom. I'll bring it over Friday. We'll sit down Shabbos after Dab, they'll be chon together. Hush. They did that for a number of weeks. <laughs> Not just down for the person, to take that care and, and to go make a chon and bring it to the man's house, to spend time with him. Ayyid! He didn't know the man. Ayyid, he's a chizak, the chiz, half of a fellow. And, uh, another amazing story. Lawrence brings the story that uh, he called a meeting of all the. Askon and Kibirim, I think from Chutzlar, it's all came to Eretz Yisrael. It's a major meeting for Klal Yisrael. They have to have, and they cancel all the other appointments, meetings. It's a major issue for Klal Yisrael. So they're all waiting to go into his apartment. And he turns up with his son. And he sees something's going on. He said, yeah, we're going to Jerev Shach. There was a very major meeting today. He says, I, I just traveled up Haifa, wherever he came from with his son, just to get a bracha. He didn't know. I guess two hours away, wherever it might be. So they decide, okay, you can go in for a minute. Half a minute, a minute they gave him. Very thankful. He goes in there for a minute, turns into five minutes, half hour. An hour, an hour and a half. <laughs> he came out an hour and a half. <laughs> They're ready to kill the guy. <laughs> he can't say, what happened? So he's, what happened? He said, well, I came in my son. He's 14 years old. He asked the Roshima for a brach, he should... Uh, Brach for what? He said, Shabbat Cheshek and learning, Cheshek, Cheshek and learning, Shmak. Not just Cheshek, but Cheshek and learning. No. Oi, what much Gemara are you learning? Bob Metzia, oh, Shach ran to get a Gemara, sat down with it, love land. And they start learning. El Metzia Shalev, El Metzia. No. So what do you say? And he tells him this, and the other guy should say, he said, the Brach says something, Shach says it like this, and the Brach says like that. Okay, next. Hour and a half. And the Brach is crying, and he says, what's the way you're crying about? He says, it's the first time in my life I understand the Gemara. Anyway, so they left. And the Shach comes out and says, I don't know, get me to it. Please come back to me. He said, what's going on? He's a cloud, he's wrong. So he said, Kroch Nefesh, a Chadish Kekesh. <laughs> I had a better terrorist. They came for Klai Yisrael. This is Klai Yisrael. A bachan has to have that slacha in his learning. Ah, no revolution. 
the story goes after story after story. I'll, I'll, I'll try to do a couple more. <laughs> the time's running out. Anyway, uh, there's a story. I think he brings it also. The other places saw the story, but there was uh, a uh, mental health issues. Was there Pesach the night of Dikas Chavitz? So she calls up a psychiatrist in Yerushalayim. You have to see this Bacha tonight. He says, Rabbi, it's Dikas Chavitz. No, 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 I see tonight. I'm going to bring him. She going to bring him. I'll see the Bacha if the Rosh does not bring him. Okay. Anyway, so he saw the Bacha for two hours. The next morning, the neighbor asked him, you must have had a very special guest last night. He says, what do you mean? I don't know. Shach is walking up and down for two hours outside waiting for him. The guy is in shock. He calls Rosh Hashim. Rosh I said, and tonight Rosh doesn't come. I said, did I bring him in? <laughs> Somebody had to bring him. Everybody has to be. I have a small apartment. I do it in five minutes. It's a, <laughs> Stop yeah, yeah, story after story. He once came home from a from a surgery or something. He brings a story that he had ter- he couldn't move. The top of his says, "Rebbe, Rashiva can learn now." I said, "I can't learn now." He says, "What's Rashiva doing home? Go to a convalescent place, rest up." He says, "There's a seminary near here. Girls, a lot of them have have troubled issues. They come to me and they talk to me, and I try to help them and give them advice, whatever." I I, I'm not in a position of giving them advice right now. I can listen to them. Can give them my ear. <laughs> I can go to a convalescent place. I can, I can be there for them to listen to what they have to say. And Yingu Man comes to him and wants to know which kailo to go to. Shlai, Bnei Brak, he has two different kailo choices. He says, come back in the week. Uh, guy comes back in the week. Tells him go to the Shlai kailo. He goes to the kailo of and says, what have you to do with Rav Shach? Rene Nicol, <laughs> your grandson said, "No, you're a Talmud Luvin. No, you learn Panovich, right? No. What's the shaykh to Shach? Says, nothing. I don't believe." <laughs> Rosh Hashach came down to the Kailo. He grilled the Rosh Kailo. I don't know, an hour or two. <laughs> How they pay, what they learn, what the ruach is, what the, the setup is. He went to the Yigun Goliath, checking out how the matzav is, and he did it to the other Kailo too. <laughs> The guy couldn't believe his ears. He comes back to Rosh Hashiva. Rosh Hashiva says, Shiva, I'm from Shultika. I just met the Eskad Eitzah. I didn't know Shiva, Shiva, Triach. He says, yes, me the Eitzah. I'll tell you which cut. How am I supposed to know? I don't know anything about the place. So I want to tell you what the best thing for you is. So I have to find out. <laughs> so the person has the, the, the care, the, the, the attention the given. The Kol Yachid Yachid, called Tzibu Vatzibu. It was amazing. Gift used to send Fry of people from Cleveland, it could be rich people, wherever he said he knew these people in Cleveland, he told them to go to Rav Shach. So they would come back and say, Rabbi, that was the most wonderful experience of my life. <laughs> he says, uh, and you know, this rabbi is the, the, the leader of the fanatics. <laughs> no, not him. <laughs> that was his role that he had. He said, I told them, Rav Shach's not doing you. He said, but I said, I want Rav Shach, they should see what a yid looks like. <laughs> He said, if you would have money, I heard it from him, he said, I'd pay money to go to Israel once a month just to look at his face and come back. <laughs> the tour of Avi and Shal Yisrael. <laughs> what was Rabbi's experience with Mufaf? My uh, dick experience. Uh, <laughs> I was like a task of different Shilas, and when I was there, they always say very warm. His Avi Yisrael was half a fellow. I had a few experiences, but one was amazing. Uh, <laughs> anyway, I, went, I once went to him at night, but then Reb Leza Sarotskin came in, he was like, tell Stone, Reb Shapiro came from the Knesset, uh, I said, oh, I think I'll come back a different time, <laughs> so I came back on a Friday, yes, Reb Chaim Mordechai Osman take me in, he was a bach, I was a bach, I figured no one's going to bother with Shach Friday afternoon, so I took it, so I told him, I said, can you take me in, he said, yeah, so we went in, there was even a man there, and Shach is very beautiful, he's caressing this kid's cheek, and all the other kids, and asking questions, and this three-year-old kid was running around, trying to, Shach was trying to catch him, but couldn't get him. Anyway, the kid said, they left, so I asked to Hashiva, can I ask Hashiva Kasha? He said, yeah. I don't know if I can answer, he says. <laughs> Esme Kasha was in Ksuba, so I had a raya about a chuppah, 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 whatever it was from a Gemara, and Ksuba's later, and he just launched into the whole so I, I couldn't really hear what he was saying. Anyway, after he finished, so he turns to Chaim Mordechai and he says, uh, she's a king. I said, what? He said, maybe, maybe he's a coin. So he turns to Chaim Mordechai and he said, no. 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 He said, no.
she would say he wants a bracha. So a bracha, I felt like, what else do you say? I thought of Kairach, I thought she opened up. So I, I said something which did not please him at all, but that's what came to mind, so I said it. I said, I heard Shem Reb Yaakov Kabadetsky, he told somebody going to Eretz Yisrael that uh, he should tell the G'dayim and the for them, but not Roshach. Why? Because it is Klai Yisrael. <laughs> he is Klai Yisrael, doesn't he feel a special? He got so angry. I ran out the door. <laughs> but, uh, yes, uh, my Shilas, I used to go, it was very, uh, it was very warm. It was, uh, Shiloh, interesting. I asked him a Shiloh, I was learning a mirror, so I went to go to a very hush of Shir there, and the Maggid Shir told me, because my brother's in the Shir, so he says, It's very bitter, it ain't Shir, it's very it's very two brothers in one Shir, so go ask. He was like, a brother of Royce Maggid Shir. So, okay, he told me to ask, I'm going to ask. I went to Roshach, I asked, so it's interesting. I asked him the Shiloh about going to Chabur, and then he, he like smirked. And he says, I said, are you secret with the brother? Are you fighting? He said, no. He said, you can go to the shiva. He, he answered the question that I asked, but the shiva said, how this for them? It doesn't hold them. He says, what do you need it for? And I said, it's, it's, it's a line of life. He, he answered the shiva I asked. <laughs> but, uh, so I had to prod him for So then I figured he didn't understand what I meant. I came back the next morning. I said, I said, Chabura, I meant it's like a blot shiva. So he says, uh, it's a line of life. I was 23, right? I made an age. Did you still remember yourself? No, I made it with the Chabrusa. I made it with Shira every day. So I said, Kapanovich, the blood Shira. And I can't say for sure these are the words. It sounded like he said, Vezok Tzateva. That's who said it. Anyway, that's what he said. So anyway, uh, he said, it's a land of light. That was so interesting. That was another shot. I had a few different shots, but it was. Uh, uh, the, the, the chizik just going on Friday night. They used to go Shabbos a lot of times to the neighbor. I said, my cousin, but Friday night, he used to go to the Padavish and down by the Yisir Shach then. And I saw him walking on the street from his house to the Yisir Shach, Sunday morning, early morning, before I went back to Yeshiva, it happened. And then Shabbos morning, he used to have a lot of letterman by the stipe who was there. It was also, it was, uh, <laughs>